everyone! So, I just finished uh, this book, which doesn't have a cover on it, but it's, well, it's Indigo by Helen Dunmore. Clearly, it didn't want to focus. But anyway, the reason why the cover has been ripped off is my aunt gave it to me, and usually, uh, and she works in a bookstore, and usually when uh, people do this is when bookstores, they will take the cover, rip the cover off, and then mail it back to the publishing house. So they would mail this book, they would mail it back to Harper Trophy Canada, an imprint of HarperCollins Publishers LTD. They would mail it back and be like, hey, we want some more of this book. That's pretty much why it does that because sometimes that explains why if the cover has been ripped off then it cannot be sold and such and it means that they've wanted more um books more of this book so anyway to get to actual review i'm not gonna be keeping this book because i despise the way this first person writing has been written. It is ridiculously stupid and it, I think it's the author's fault and I think the editor didn't catch this is because there are some paragraphs where you have like a normal paragraph but it's like the middle of the paragraph they let me just pick a paragraph and I'll just use it from there. Okay so we've got a bunch of paragraphs. So like, let's take this paragraph. One of these ran random sentences, like right about here, where my nail is. So there's a comma right there. Literally, um, they hit enter. So the sentence, the other the se half of the sentence that begins with "all have" right there would have gone down to here and be like makes another paragraph so they'll hit enter and tab to get like you know like little space from the side and literally it'll happen a bunch of times in this book and it's like what the f are you a fucking idiot who allowed you to print this book how did your editor be like this is good and like how it did like oh my god it is ridiculously stupid it's not even you know uh like here so you can see like there's dashes where you just you know it's you have a sentence but then like you suddenly stop yourself because and sometimes you do it to your own self like not just writing it but you go to yourself like you start thinking something and start saying something and then you suddenly stop and it's like no, sorry, that's ridiculously stupid. And you rethink what you're thinking, stuff. But the stuff I'm talking about, it literally, it's not like a break. They literally hit enter and nobody either caught that or they just like, fuck it, whatever. This is not even an ARC copy, okay? This is an actual full, like, this came out on a specific published date. It's not even like it doesn't have like I'm pretty sure it would say um uh, say something here. Yeah. Um. My my one of my Kelly the Kelly Armstrong book the first one of the first books in the trilogy. It has like the publication date that would appear he it, at the top like the month the date and the year of one of the actual publication date is. This doesn't have it. It doesn't have any of that stuff. So it's like. Are you, you're fucking idiots. And just besides that, it's the stupid way of doing like first person. It is ridiculous. It's not, it doesn't make sense. It's like, it, it, it just is pissing me off so badly. And it's just ridiculous. There, there is, there is one way of doing first person. And that is the proper way of doing first person. You know, when you're writing in first person and your main character is speaking to you, basically. And the, like the main first character is basically speaking to you and describing to you what is happening from their point of view, be it male or female perspectives, whatever. Yeah. It's so ridiculous. I hate it so much. And 
It's such a hate that I am not keeping this book. But the some of the characters are this one character named Pharaoh. He is just so set in his ways and can't like like accept the fact that like you there are two worlds. There are two worlds. Like there's Ingo and then there's you know Earth basically. The the Ingo like Pharaoh refers to. Um, Sapphire and Connor as like air people, uh, capital A. So Pharaoh is being so not just stubborn, but he is being ridiculous and obstinate. I think that's the word, not stubborn, because stubborn is too soft of a word for what Pharaoh is being like. F A R O. And like, I can't believe how stubborn he's being, and he can't, like, grow as a person. Like, he is, well, he's a mer, but he technically, you would categorize him as a person. Even though he he would say, like, I'm not a person, I'm a mer, I'm, I'm me. I'm like, yeah, but you're technically still a person. You're not a plant, are you? You're not a, a thing. Like, this is a thing. I'm a person. This is a thing. I'm a person. Just, oh, he's ridiculous. And, and like, as a person, he's ridiculous. And it's very annoying. But, there are some redeeming qualities. But not, it's only enough to get me to read the next four books in this five book series. I have the first book, but now I'm not because I don't want it. But, the concept of Ingo, it, it's, you know, like, the, uh, like, like, I'm an air person, but there are, like, water people, technically, like, you know, mermaids, and, um, Aquaman, and, you know, other, like, you know, water-type creatures, like, whatever you would want to call them. They live strictly under the water, and apparently they call this thing like a skin oh for like you can go past this and be like you can breathe without actually breathing so you breathe somewhat like um an amphibian no, no not amphibian an aquatic thing so you would breathe in basically breathe in the water but like breathe out the air sort of thing that's how it somewhat works and yeah, the concept of Ingo and that, and we've only we've only met two of like the Mer kind of pe like the water people, uh, which is Pharaoh and a get, like somewhat like a female version of him named Elvira, and yes, it is spelled and basically I'm pronouncing it the way you know the goth woman dark dressed woman is yeah but anyway those are the only two people you meet like it's uh, yeah they're interesting like these two characters people you meet have like they describe it as like a seal bottom so like, you know like a big like those brown like the brown seals you basically cut in half and that's their lower half of their body like you know uh, they're basically mer people but you know, their lower half is not a fish, it's a mammal. It's a seal bottom. And that's an interesting concept. And the whole, like, you know, you can breathe underwater without actually breathing, without, like, you know, breathing underwater. It's an interesting concept. And the whole, like, we've, like, the whole, like, the sort of concept of Ingo is interesting. And the fact that, you know, like, divers, you know, that when divers go down there, they're not technically going into Ingo, but apparently they're invading Ingo, but they're not really invading Ingo because they do, like, ugh, some, like, the concept of Ingo is really cool at one perspective, but the whole Ingo is, like, it doesn't fully make sense. It doesn't feel, like, properly, like, integrated with, like, our entire, our world. And I'm not just talking about us air people. I'm talking about the entire, like, globe. So, like, you've got the air and you've got the water. So, 
or we're we're la we're land people. We got land people and what? Whatever. It doesn't feel fully explained. Hopefully, it's better. There's it gets better, but it doesn't feel like Ingo and like you know when divers go into the water. It doesn't feel properly integrated. It, it just. It doesn't feel like it works properly from my perspective. And like Pharaoh, Pharaoh, his like mindset is so like, oh my god, I I hate the way he's being. And like he'll be sneaky about it and be like, mm, I don't, you, you don't know anything. Like okay, yes, Sapphire, us don't know anything. Okay, you gotta uh, talk to us and you know explain to us and don't be like snotty. And, you know, menacing and malicious about, like, holding back information. Like, yes, you can... Apparently, he's only shown, like, the a single grain of sand, the amount that he's shown her of Ingo. But, like, they're us. But still... It's, uh, I'm hoping he, like, you know, expands himself in the next four books because I don't know about Elvira because we don't really she kind of hangs out with Sapphire's brother Connor so we don't really get to speak to her but I'm hoping she has a better attitude towards everything but from what Connor has told her sister basically us she's kind of the same way as Pharaoh but and Pharaoh and Sa no, Connor and Sapphire, they're an interesting pair. They're brother and sister. He's the Connor's older. They're an interesting They're interesting people. I don't want to say couple because they're not they're brother and sister. I I like them. And apparently Connor's only 13, and they don't read as 13-year-olds. They read as like like a 16 and a 15-year-old. They read more as like as like a, like older teens as i said like about 16 15 years old they read about they read like that age but apparently connor is 13 because he says how he's asked how old he is and he says he's 13 it's like you don't sound that age this doesn't read like a 13 year old it's like really uh, anyway i i the progression of this, their exploration of and like getting to know Ingo and their feelings towards it, and apparently, uh, Sapphire is very strongly connected to Ingo. Like they both are because of like descendants, but she apparently has like stronger ties to Ingo than her brother. But I think he can be just as strong as her, but in different ways. And apparently he has a strength of his own, which I'm guessing will get progressed into the next four books. But they are really the only two that I, I liked. They were interesting characters. They Connor felt that he would be the more difficult character, but he's not such a difficult character. He's a I like that I like that character, and he kind of stays the same, and I like that. And but um, Sapphire, you never, we don't, we never find out how old she is. We just know that she's younger than Connor and they're not twins, but she does like some growing. Like she goes through like sort of jealousy and she comes to the term that, yes, I don't like this person. I'm not going to say, but this per this other per character gets introduced into their little group and she doesn't really like him, but she acknowledges that she doesn't like him, but he's also a good thing to integrate with their group and she does grow a little and yeah it's hard to it, I, I'm having a hard time describing her and her growth and like because it's not like a full growth because she still has some difficulties with Ingo just because of how strong a connection she has with it and it her connection with it is like you kind of get attached to like oh my god this connection is very dangerous it can be and it is is told in here like she realizes eventually that it is very dangerous and she has to watch herself 
and yeah that's uh, and i i like that bit of growth with her and it's a very interesting like connor and sapphire are like the most the re like part of the reason why i want to re continue this series and also the fact that something happened to their father and they got they they got to do stuff with their father and that's the whole i think that's the whole premise of like the like next five books I don't know what this thing has to do with their father, but their father and them and in integrated with Ingo. And the premise of Ingo and the promises of Ingo, hopefully we get to see more and hopefully more people, uh, more Ingo people rather than just, you know, Pharaoh and Elvira. And like, Pharaoh is like, like Sapphire asked Pharaoh, like, can I see other people? And he's like, basically, why the fuck do you want to see more people? Like, am I not enough? I'm fucking enough okay you don't need to fucking see anymore he doesn't say like that but that's like the attitude i get from him and i hope we do see more because i want a different perspective from another mer so yeah that was my review a little all over the place but it is if you want a different perspective of like a mermaid book for those of you who are really love reading mermaid books i would recommend it it is a different perspective of a type of mermaid book but i can't say i liked it and i don't know how many other people would like this type of mermaid book but here but read it and you know get your own perspective on it don't rely on i don't know I, I can't say I recommend this or as I recommend it as a mermaid book, but if you are into mermaids, this is an interesting book to read, an interesting take on mermaids. Yeah. So yeah, that's all I really gotta say. You can read it if you want, and if you're into mermaids, this, it could be interesting. And my, it's a very gloomy day. It actually, I'm actually noticing that it has started raining. So yeah, um, my next one, I have my interlibrary loan book came in, but I'm not going to get it till Monday. And I'll be able to pick it up Monday, which will be fine, but I'm going to be working on this. This is Vampire Beach, and it is the, the title of this book series. This has the first two books of the series, and we have... The first one I'm going to read is Bloodlust by Alex Duvall. This was actually my friend's uh, book, but she didn't like it. I'd read it a while, a good, like years ago, and she didn't really want it. I was like, oh my god, I like, I love this book. And she's like, do you want it? I was like, yes, I want it. Thank you. Because I, I read all four books. It's a four book series called Vampire Beach. And it's really interesting. And it's a teen book. And it it has two books in it they're relatively skinny they're like two-thirds of this book that's the size of the actual books so yes i'm going to be reading bloodless which is as i said the first book um and then so i'm gonna read some of the back here or no i'm gonna read the entire back because it's just i don't know i'm just gonna read the entire back so. jason freeman is Stoked when his family relocates to exclusive Devere Heights, Malibu. The kids at his posh new high school are surprisingly friendly, and pretty soon Jason's part of the in crowd. He even gets to meet the hot but unattainable girl. Then the morning after one of the then the morning after one off the hook party, a girl washes up on the beach dead. There's no explanation except a suspicious looking bite mark on her body. Now Jason has to admit that what you don't want to know can hurt you. And when an old friend pays him a visit, they have no idea that they're about to put themselves in mortal danger, literally. So yeah, as we know, like each book has, if there's an individual book, it would have like a little of that. That basically describes the first book. Though I think the second paragraph here about his friend, I think he comes into the second book. I'm not 100% sure, but we will get to find out as I do this. Hopefully I can finish Bloodlust before, well, I can do my book review on Monday, which is when I'm going to go pick the book up. So yeah, this, this is the next 
book I'm going to be reading technically. It's two books, but I'm going to be reading one and then I'm going to do the book review. Yeah. But I am going, once I finish the first book, I will read the library book. The second book can wait because it is my, this is mine. It is mine now. So yeah. Yes. So yes. I hope you liked this long review. This is a long review. I spent like 20 minutes talking about Ingo because of a lot of stuff. And hopefully it makes all the sense. I don't know. I, it will be a long while before I get to edit this video. But if you did like it, hit that like button down below. And let me know if you have read the Ingo series. I want to know how other people like it because I just, just, yeah. So yeah. And just don't be nasty, don't be negative in the comments because we don't need it, okay? We don't need that in the world. Like, like I had some negative comments about the book, per se. And about the author and the editor, just because of the way it was written. Yeah. But we just don't want to be, like, soup with, I don't know. We just don't want bullying. I would, I don't think I was being bullying, but it's an opinion. And it just, it, it doesn't feel like they edited that right. That's all. But, you know, if you're going to be really, really mean, just don't be, okay? Because we don't need negative nastiness, okay? We don't need it, all right? And if this is the first time you're watching my video, please hit that big red subscribe button down there by my picture for more book reviews, hauls, unboxing, unbagging, because something's coming up over my little envelope or a plastic bag wrapped thingy, vlogmas, random vlogs, and random in videos I have no idea what to categorize. And now I have an orange thing on my viewfinder that I don't know what it is. But anyway, I gotta get going because I'm going to do some this deal with that thing and I'm going to finish what try I'm going to try to finish today continue watching Digimon season four and start reading this because I would love to be finished this by Monday or before Monday because that would be lovely though I don't know because tomorrow and Tomorrow to Sunday, I am with Manny because he's off then. So anyway, yeah. I hope you liked this video, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, everyone.